Howdy, welcome to the Rhinestone Roper Ranch. Today we're going to be talking about throwing knives at the wheel of death, or the wheel of destiny in my show. We're going to be talking about how to throw at it, the mechanics of the wheel, and lastly, how to keep the thing going. But first, if you take a second to subscribe and ring that little bell there, I'd appreciate it. All right, let's talk about the wheel. The wheel has several parts. Every wheel has to have a base, and each wheel has to have an upright to fix the wheel to. You call it a tripod. In my case, it's got four legs, so a quad pod. It's got to have two bearings. It's got to have the wheel itself covered in wood with a shaft that will go through those two bearings. And you need something to support your, your uh, assistant. You know, something to stand on, a foot piece something to brace the center of the body with. That might be optional, but, but I think that's best. And something to uh, brace the head and shoulders. Let's talk about how to throw at the wheel. You know, there's a magician a while back had a TV show and, and he, uh, he spoiled tricks for everybody. He showed how the trick was done and explained it so it wasn't magic anymore. I never watched that show because I didn't want my magic spoiled for me. I'd rather be amazed. One of the tricks he uh, analyzed though was the wheel of death and his proposition was this is impossible. This can't be done. It's too dangerous. So there's a trick. The knives come out from the back some way. <laughs> well that might be possible on a stationary board but I've never seen anyone figure out how to do it on the wheel. The wheel is just you get what you see at that wheel. So that magician did us a favor. He, he taught everyone this is impossible. So when they see it actually performed, they're amazed. And of course, it's not impossible. You don't see many people do it because it is difficult. It is dangerous. And you got to pack this wheel around. <laughs> this is hundreds of pounds, hundreds of pounds of steel and probably almost, almost 150 pounds of wood. You got to be pretty determined to pack this thing around and set it up. It's hard to handle. Those are reasons you don't see it very often. You know, on my show, I use, I use big, heavy knives. I like people to be able to hear them hit the wood, big thunk. I like them nice and wide so people can see them. They can see them going through the air. And once they're stuck in the board, this wheel turning, the knives kind of flash. And so they can see that they're, they're in there. One thing that means, though, since these knives are big and this wheel is turning and creating centrifugal force, I have to throw these things pretty hard. I throw them hard so they're stuck solid so they don't, they don't start wobbling and spin their way out. Here's my theory of how to throw safely at the wheel or as safe as they can get. First thing is you gotta throw them pretty hard so they don't spin out. You don't throw them 100% of your strength. You don't do anything 100% when you're performing. It's in the 80%, maybe 85. But you gotta throw it pretty hard. One thing you do have to do 100% is to concentrate. When I throw at the wheel, I forget about the girl. I look only at the spot I'm gonna hit. You know, I'm not listening to the audience. People say, did you hear that audience? My answer is no. I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. All I know is what that last knife did and how I'm gonna throw the next knife and where. That's all I know. You gotta ask yourself, where am I gonna put the first knife? And where am I gonna put the last knife? My answer was, as knife throwers throwing around a person, we start low and work our way up. That way there's less chance of the knives hitting each other. If you start high, the tip of that knife is coming down for the next one, it might, it might clip the end of this first knife. So my first knife goes right down here, near the gal's head, but her head is moving away from the knife. Then I focus on my next spot. I watch that spot coming around when these strikes come up and down, this knife hits. Look for this spot, and this spot, and this spot. Then my next knife, the sixth knife, goes down here near her feet as her feet are moving away. Follow it around, boom, boom, boom. So the last knife, I'm all warmed up, the last knife, goes near her head as her head is moving towards the knife. I've had 10 knives to zero in and get confidence. 
I think that's the safest way to do it. One advantage to throwing at the wheel, you don't have to get close to the girl to be exciting. If you got a stationary board, you know, the knife throwers are trying to get really close to that person. Or they have them lean back, the knives are coming in close to her neck. And that's exciting. I, I don't do that because I throw at the wheel. <laughs> if I can throw in a straight line when this girl is moving faster than the audience is comfortable, then they're amazed. None of these knives get close. You know, the knife is supposed to go here. A miss is right here. That's a miss. That miss still puts the girl a foot away from the knife. I'm comfortable with the fact that I'm never gonna hit a person with a knife. I, that will not happen. That is just way too much of an error to even conceive of. The problem is, here's a piece of wood here, and you can't find a perfect piece of wood. There's knots in this wood. If this knife hits a knot, it might not stick. Or it might stick for one or two turns and then, and then fall out. And then you got a knife, uh, this girl is still moving. You got a knife wobbling, floating through the air. That knife is the problem. You know, it's not, it's not as bad as a knife coming in here at, at 50 or 60 miles an hour. But this knife, if it, if it contacts your body, contacts your body any place, especially on a bone, you know, it's not gonna feel good. So for me, the knife that doesn't stick is actually the problem. Now I throw one knife every turn of the wheel. A lot of guys don't throw in a ladder. They throw in clusters way out to the edge. So their knives will go out here and out here. Now that's pretty safe. You don't have to worry, worry about building a ladder. Just throw your knives out here. And a lot of them only throw four knives or six knives. I throw 10. But a lot of those guys, the good throwers who are thrown in clusters, they throw every half spin of the wheel. So throwing twice as fast. And that's difficult. If you give this wheel a good spin, throwing once every turn, that, that keeps you busy. Throwing, throwing twice as fast, <laughs> that's fast. So there's a trade-off. They're throwing out here away from the girl, but they're throwing twice as fast. It's fun throwing at this because people can't believe their eyes. They can't imagine doing it themselves. And that was, is what makes a perfect trick. Of course, there's no trick here. It's just all, it's all skill and confidence. Anytime you're throwing around another person, or really anytime you're throwing a knife or a tomahawk, you have to have 100% confidence. There can't be any second guessing. If you're timid, if you're nervous, if you're scared, your emotions will contract and you won't follow through and that knife won't stick or you'll hang on too long it, and it'll just hit the ground. Total focus and total confidence is what you've got to have with this thing. I've had to have people who come back at a fair, they'll come back to every show. Or I'll have a vendor who watches every show. And at a 10 day fair, that'll be 30 shows. They've seen it 30 times and they get there so they can see the wheel. And towards the end of that fair, they're still coming up and trying to figure out where the knives come from. They're just convinced that I can palm 10 of these knives and hide them and not throw them. I, I wish I could do that, but I can't. One thing you might have noticed by looking at the hardware on this thing, this foot peg is much, much heavier than this, the neck brace is. And that's how you want it. You want it so when your, your assistant gets on the wheel, she doesn't automatically turn upside down. If this wheel were perfectly balanced, top to bottom, a person's heavier from their waist up than they are from the waist down. So when a person gets on there, they would turn upside down immediately. You want it more balanced when they get on and a little bit heavy at the feet so they don't turn upside down. So the neck piece needs to be pretty light and the foot piece needs to be really heavy. Every time I throw a knife to practice, it's in my head. I pretend I'm throwing at this. If I can get my form down, so I don't have to worry about my form, my form is consistent, I can stick a knife every time, then all I need is the timing. That's the main part of your concentration when you're throwing at this thing. As Soon as you stick a knife, you look at the next spot. You're following that spot around as you're doing that. You gotta get the next knife, gotta get the next knife off the stack into your hand to get your hand back. If my knife is going right here, 
I'm following that spot all the way around. By the time the wheel's here, I better have that knife in my hand and my hand coming back. My hand's coming back, my hand's coming forward. I let go of the knife here and it sticks about right there. After you've thrown for a while, you're not aware of leading the target. I'm not aware that I might release that knife here and it sticks right here. That's not part of my mind. What is part of my mind though, is knowing that I gotta get that knife in my hand to get that arm cocked back so I can throw it right here. At only three paces away, and I'm throwing pretty hard, so there's not much lag time between when I let go and when it sticks. But your knife throw doesn't start here. Your knife throw starts getting the dang thing in your hand and coming back and coming forward with it and then throwing it. I mean, that's a long process to throw. You know, one thing I, I do if I'm just throwing knives, I start forward, come back and throw. When I'm throwing at the wheel, having to go fast, I don't come back with it. My body stays right here. All the knives go in this board right here and that board right there. You know, right along these stripes. So these are the only two boards that need to be replaced. The rest of these boards have been, are the original ones I put on 20 or 25 years ago. And our last topic is how to keep the wheel going. You know, by the time I spin that wheel and speed it up, and then go back and pick out my knives and then, and then throw 10 knives. And then with my wife, I'd go pick up targets and throw them in the air. She'd go and shoot them while the wheel was still going. By the time I've done that, that wheel is spun, I don't know, between 20 and 30 times. And this wheel, it's heavy, so it keeps going a little bit, but it won't keep going by itself at the same speed. So that's the job of, uh, of the assistant. So I get it going, get it spinning, then she used just as a little, little timing with, with waiting one foot or using her knees or she can't do much more than that because she's kind of tied in there. I don't know how she does it because I've never done it myself. But she controls the speed. Or sometimes she'll get excited, we'll have a big audience and she'll get that thing, she'll get it humming and it's all I can do to keep up with her. So after that I go, hey, that was a good job but, but uh, don't worry about making it go so fast next time. That was almost too fast. You know, I get to take him for granted what a, a great job my wife and my daughter do on this thing. But it, it's all brought back to me, you know, when we put a newscaster on there. Sometimes the news people will want to advertise in the fair and they'll want to climb on the wheel and have knives thrown around them. And I'll do it. But, you know, it's, uh, it's scary to do because the energy of your assistant helps things go smooth. If you got a person on there that really is scared and anyone is scared the first time, then things don't go as well. And the spinning of the wheel is the main thing. I can put that person on there and spin that thing and it keeps going, it keeps going. I throw that first knife, kathunk, and the wheel almost stops. Something, you know, that newscaster on here is not thinking about keeping it going. I didn't tell them about that. They don't have time to worry about that. But as soon as that first knife hits, they tense up some way and boy, the wheel slows down. It's, it's, it's painful, it's really slow. And one thing you don't want when you're throwing at the wheel is too much time. You don't want too much time to think or to second guess or to get ready too soon and have to hesitate. You want things to go in rhythm, the same rhythm every time. If someone's letting that wheel slow down, it's here and then it's here, and too much time, too much time to think. And you'll outthink yourself and make a mistake. Never made a mistake with a newscaster, but it's, uh, it's uncomfortable, let's put it that way. Anyway, that's how to throw at the wheel. And as you can figure out, the biggest secret to the wheel of death is that there's no secret. <laughs> it's just exactly what it looks like. It's skill, it's timing, it's practice, it's confidence. And that's it. All right, thanks for coming. You guys might take a look at these other videos coming up. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and press like there. We'll see you next time.